But today a crazy Austrian dude plans to jump from a balloon floating at the edge of space. Why don't you just stay right there? You might learn a thing or two. Before we start, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of our viewers and our fans for helping us cross the 20,000 view mark earlier this week. The channel's getting bigger and better and we've just signed a partnership deal with a rather prominent network on YouTube. We couldn't have done it without you guys, so thank you for all of your continued support. Keep up the good work and don't forget to share us with your friends and family. Anyway, last week I was telling you about the Bloodhound supersonic car. If you missed that episode, click here. I have to tell you this week that it's passed its rocket test with flying colours. Everything went according to plan and the 4 metre rocket fired up perfectly to generate 14,000 pounds of thrust. The Cosworth F1 engine revved up to 16,000 RPM to deliver enough high test peroxide into the fuel chamber to keep the rocket burning for 10 seconds. It was the biggest rocket fired in the UK for over 20 years and marked a key milestone in the 1000 mile per hour rocket car's development. According to the Bloodhound website, link below, the car's chassis design will be complete in 52 days, which will stand it in good stead for being on target for its South Africa debut next year. Next up we've got some pretty amazing research from the guys over at MIT. A team of scientists have actually managed to photograph light in slow motion. Now this might not sound too amazing, but let me explain. The team have developed a camera that doesn't only capture images at a trillion frames per second, but they've managed to use this camera to capture light as it travels from its source and over an object. When we switch a light and it seems to fill up the whole room instantaneously. This isn't exactly true, light just travels so fast that we can't see it as it fills the room. The light travels not unlike an explosion, when a shock wave travels across a space, bouncing off all the surfaces it encounters. Imagine this, you take a handful of rice and throw it right in someone's face. If you were to record that scene and then play it back in slow motion, you'll see all the grains of rice bouncing off that person's face. I'd do it, but I'm not cleaning loads of rice up. It's the same thing with light. All the things we see in the world around us is just light being reflected off different objects in the environment. So if we could take a handful of protons, or light particles if you will, and throw them at an object, and then slow that footage down by one trillion percent, we'd see those photons bouncing off the object. And that's precisely what they've done down at MIT. They took a light source and flashed it on, then off again, in the space of a trillionth of a second. This small packet of photons then travelled towards, through and beyond a bottle of water. Through a very new and highly sophisticated photography technology, known as femto photography, they took trillions of pictures of this light package as it passed through the air and the bottle. When they put all these images together in a timeline, they could see the packet of light as the photons travelled through the translucent surface of the bottle, getting bounced and reflected around by the water molecules inside. The packet of light passes through not unlike a bullet fired through an apple. The package of light that the cameras captured was however so small that they needed to use some really clever timing and layering of multiple exposures. They then passed these gigabytes of data through some computers to generate this and many other fascinating animations. Ramesh Raskar pointed out something quite profound in his TED talk on the subject, links in the description below. He mentioned that photography is no longer about all these high resolutions that camera companies are battling on about. It's now about time. This week I've got four stories to tell you as opposed to the usual three, as there's been something keeping me on the edge of my seat all day, that being the Red Bull Stratus mission. At crazy skydiving host Felix Baumgartner has today embarked on a special journey to the edge of space in nothing more than a weather balloon and a fancy life sustaining capsule to take on the world high skydiving record. Not only that, but a number of other accolades too, such as the first man on earth to break the sound barrier without a vehicle. The 43 year old Austrian's jump had to be postponed a few times due to bad weather, once yesterday when it was called off until today, and again a few times today, which is why I can't tell you how it went because the launch has again been postponed until a later date. As you can see here, the balloon is being completely blown over, so it's obviously not going to work in this situation. The plan is to take a 36,500 metre trip to the edge of space in a huge 700 foot weather balloon and then jump out. He'll quickly fall back down to earth, passing first the old skydiving record of 31,332 metres that was set by Colonel Joe Kittinger back in the 1960s. He'll pass that within a few seconds. Then he'll accelerate to a greater speed than that of the speed of sound in as few seconds as there is no atmosphere up there to slow him down. Once he's gone hurtling through the stratosphere at an estimated 690 miles per hour, he'll start to slow down as he meets the mermaid molecules in our atmosphere and then past the 14,000 meter point, the altitude that a Boeing 747 aircraft flies at. Next he'll fall beyond the height of the Mount Everest before opening his chute at 1500 meters and cruising casually back down to mission control at Roswell, all being well. The whole trip back down to earth will take no more than 10 minutes. Of course there's no way on earth that anyone could survive being out in the open air at the edge of space because, well, there isn't any air. So to keep him alive while he's up there, he's wearing a specially designed pressure suit, not unlike that of any spaceworthy astronaut. 
The suit is fitting with a sun visor that's heated so it doesn't freeze up I imagine. A few HD cameras to document the trip. There's a mirror on his wrist that he can use to check the suit because the suit limits his movement as it's reinforced to protect him from the immense pressures he'll be encountering as he batters through our upper atmosphere. And he's obviously got an oxygen supply so he can breathe and also there are four GPS devices that will document his location and speed at all points in the journey and record the findings on an SD card packed safely into his chest plate. It's not all fun and games nor is it solely a thrill seeking mission for Felix although I imagine it will get his adrenaline sufficiently flowing. It is overall a science mission to try and find out how the human body copes with travelling at unaided at supersonic speeds. When they do eventually launch the mission, I'll do a few tweets to let you know how it went. Or you can find out yourself by following at Red Bull Stratus on Twitter. Or just watch next week's show where I'll give you a roundup of what went on. And finally this week I've got some more updates from our little friend up there on Mars, the Curiosity Rover. This week they finally actually managed to scoop some material from the surface. But they've paused testing it because someone spotted something shiny on the floor at Mission Control and they started investigating that instead. The mass cam noticed something glinting on the alien surface, clearly highlighted in this picture, annotated by William Pomerantz on Twitter. Even sarcastic Rover managed to get a word in about it. However, they paused the scoop mission for a very good reason. If that piece of shiny stuff is, as suspected, a piece of plastic from the Rover, it could ruin the results of a chemical analysis of any material that they've scooped up it makes its way into the science lab. When you're dealing with something that's millions of miles away and costs billions of dollars to get it there, you don't want to be taking any chances like that. So once they've managed to sort out what they're doing with a little chunk of plastic, they'll start flushing out the chemical lab's intakes as they inevitably get coated with oil and stuff from the Earth's atmosphere, even though they were made in a highly protected environment. So they'll swill through a couple of heaps of dirt to wear it off before they submit anything through the chemical analysis. We can expect them to have something analysed within the next week or so, so as usual I'll keep you posted when we find out more. If you want to keep up with curiosity and everything else that's happening in the world of science, make sure you subscribe to our channel for the latest bits and bats from us. Also, if you've got a science question or topic that you'd like us to cover, please post it in the comments below or on Facebook, Twitter or Google Plus and we'll answer it in one of our future videos. But for now, thanks for watching this episode of DJ on Science News. I'll see you next week.